How's it going you guys? So in this video, I'm going to be discussing dental health and gum health. Before I make this video, uh, I want to say that um, I've never had cavities ever. Um, I have had, I have chipped my tooth uh, when I was younger, jumping off the stairs, landed straight on some tile, chipped the tooth, decided never to get it filled. Um, and now after hearing, you know, what dental fillings tend to, tend to do to some people, I'm kind of glad I didn't. And also, you know, I've been doing MMA and kickboxing for about eight years now. So constantly getting punched in the face, uh, you'll get some fucked up teeth after a while, even if you would, even if you wear a mouth guard, but I didn't wear a mouth guard for a while. Not to mention, um, you know, crooked teeth and teeth issues do run in my family. Typically, if you have read some of the work that I'm about to talk about here in this video, you know, back over generations, what your mother eats in her diet and what her mother eats in their diet, generations going back, dictates the bone structure and the health of people's, of uh, the offspring's teeth over time, mostly dependent on minerals and fat soluble vitamins. So, uh, with that out of the way, uh, I've been researching health a lot, or dental health a lot over the last two years. Um, saw my dentist last time in January or in February, I think it was in January of this year, and they said I have no cavities at all, um, but some slight gum recession. And so, um, through all the research that I've done, I've been looking at how can somebody uh, regrow gums, right? And a lot of people say it's not possible, but I've ran into a lot of studies that show, um, so studies that show improvement in gum disease and period periodontis through simply removing refined and processed foods. So there is one study and I'll do, I'll make sure to link it down below. It was called uh, Stone Age Diet in Relationship to, um, to Periodontis or something like that. And basically they took a large group of security guards and they, they had gum disease and they put them on what they called the Stone Age Diet, but it wasn't like a paleo diet. They basically put them on a diet where they remove all sugar and refined foods, refined flours and stuff and they just ate, they ate meat, whole grains, fruit and vegetables, and they allowed honey. They did allow honey, surprisingly enough, but no sugar or anything like that. But they, they said that the majority of their calories came from uh, blueberries and whole grains, and they did eat meat. And I think that they allowed milk in the study too. And I believe that there was also a control group. Um, yeah, I believe there's a control group. The control group uh, was, so both groups, they did not brush their teeth and they, they were instructed to not do dental hygiene. And so it was, a, it was a four week study and what they found is the group who ate this so-called Stone Age diet, that included whole grains, um, just no refined foods, and they, didn't, and they didn't brush their teeth, they actually had a complete halt in their gum in their gum recession, their gum disease, and a periodontis, but they also had an improvement in markers of inflammation and in the progression of their gum disease. So it actually got better. Uh, bleeding stopped, uh, and they also measured inflammatory cytokines in, in the mouth, and they also measured the bacterial balance in the mouth, and they found uh, that the bacteria that leads, that generally leads to gum disease and periodontis was gone, but they had increased levels of other bacteria that was unrelated to dental health. Um, they also found the type of plaque, that the type of tartar that, was, that had built up on the teeth um, seemed to actually be protective of gum disease rather than destructive. Whereas the other group who continued eating the same way um, they actually had a significant worsening of their effects and the general expected progression of gum disease. 
So there was another study that I saw on a podcast between, um, it was like a dental, it was like a dentist or a functional medicine dentist uh, who also put cancer into remission using like a ketogenic diet. It was a podcast with him and uh, Paul Saladino. Uh, I think that you could find it by searching Honey, Dental, Health, and Paul Saladino. And he mentioned this study in particular, which I'll link down below, but he also mentioned a couple other studies and explained them, but I could not find those studies. Couldn't find them in the show notes, didn't see any references. And I searched all over Google, couldn't find it, but I did find this study. Um, surprisingly enough, it was on nutritionfacts.org. Dr. Greger actually made a video uh, about it, which was fascinating considering he's a vegan av uh, advocate and the diet that they chose that you know, improved periodontist symptoms was a quote unquote Stone Age diet, a paleo diet basically, with grains. It was a meat diet though. Anyway, um, another thing, another thing is Weston A. Price, you know, and like everyone's heard of him hopefully, but Weston A. Price, you know, he was a dentist uh, back in the early 1900s, wrote the book Nutrition and Physical Degeneration Anybody who's into any kind of ancestral diet, carnivore diet, paleo diet, or any diet at all, vegan diet, or just cares about health science and nutrition or health in general, should probably at least, you know, watch lectures on his work or read the easier, some like kind of like summary book. There's a lot of books that kind of that reference his research. Uh, Nourishing Diets by Sally Fallon is the one I like to recommend to people. Uh, basically talking about all the populations that Weston Price studied. There's a book, How to Heal and Reverse Tooth Decay by, I forgot how to say this guy's name or forgot what his name was, but Prevent and Reverse Tooth Decay by Raymond Norman, I think was his name. I don't remember. But you can Google search that. Um, and so anyway, there are there were a lot of indigenous cultures that Weston Price, who was a dentist, studied, who, you know, they didn't eat refined foods, they didn't eat sugar, they didn't eat the refined grains. They did eat a lot of carbs though, a lot of carbs. But they were fermented, they were soaked, they were sprouted. They were not the grain the refined foods that we would eat these days, and they had perfect teeth. But then as uh, Western foods came into the diet, they started eating more refined sugar and they stopped eating the animal foods and animal fats. They started to see a significant increase in tooth decay. Like pretty much every single person had tooth decay at that point. And it was a generational thing. The shape of their heads changed. Their skeletal, skeletal structure changed. Their teeth changed. All of that changed after they adopted the refined foods diet. Now, these people typically, um, you know, Weston Price and them, they, they give all the weight and all the credit to, um, you know, the animal fats and the fat soluble nutrients that were found in these indigenous people's diets. But the fact is when they ate more refined foods and they replaced their whole foods with refined foods, they experienced tooth decay. Literally, their tooth are falling out of their heads. And so, when you look at the study that I had mentioned, and I'm hopefully gonna link it down below, because I have a habit of forgetting to do anything, unfortunately, uh, you know, linking studies and whatnot. But if you look at the study, you'll see, you know, the main difference is, you know, besides, like, they stopped brushing their teeth, and they stopped eating refined sugar, now the gum disease halts, and even improves. So to me, it seems like sugar and refined foods directly cause tooth decay. And brushing, and I've seen so many people who say that they brush their teeth and they do all the dental hygiene stuff, but they still eat, you know, sugar and refined foods and they still develop dental disease. And I just can't help but feel like, you know, I feel like brushing, pe brushing your teeth and hygiene, you know, dental hygiene, doesn't actually prevent tooth decay as much as we think or as much as we'd like to think. And I feel like, I can't help but feel like 
is to refine foods that directly cause it. And brushing your teeth is not going to prevent it if you eat refined foods. And especially if you chew tobacco and you smoke cigarettes, those are probably the worst. I think coffee might have a significant negative effect as well, at least it did for me. So without refined foods in the, Ameri in the modern diet, uh, I think the whole dental industry would be much, like, much lower on money than they are. Like they would not have as many customers. I think that dental disease is mostly caused by refined carbohydrates. And if you look at the studies and then you read nutrition physical degeneration, you'll probably come to the same conclusion. And I will also point out that um, Egyptians also had extremely bad teeth, but a lot of the um, a lot of the conclusions about that or the hypothesis is that because they stone grounded their wheat, there was a lot of sand in, in, in their, in their uh, bread. And so when they chew on the bread, the sand would grate down their teeth and that might be why they had bad teeth. But then there was another study and I forgot exactly what, it, what, what the study was called, but I first heard about the study from, uh, what was his name? Dr. Michael Eads. Uh, he has a lecture called um, is it anthropology in the paleo diet or the origins of the paleo diet? Um, something like paleo anthropology and the origins of the paleo diet, something like that, where he talks about farmers. So he talks about hunter gatherers in the same region, uh, 2000 years before farmers occupied that region. And they have data comparing uh, uh, skeletons from farmers in that same region and then hunter-gatherers 2,000 years before those farmers existed and they're comparing their bone structure and their dental health and they found the hunter-gatherers in that region actually had far better teeth and far better bone structure whereas the farmers for whatever reason they had uh, worse teeth and they had uh, bone disease apparently. Now you know, that's just a correlation, but there's quite a lot of evidence, you know, and we do know mechanistically that refined carbs and refined sugar tends to increase, um, you know, the acidity or they increase the likelihood of acidic byproducts being created from, you know, the bacteria that these carbs feed, you know, raising or lowering the pH of the saliva in the mouth, creating a more acidic environment where basically tooth degeneration can happen and bacteria can thrive that can continue to, to destruct the dental structure. So, um, you know, we've been told over and over again, avoid sugar and, and whatnot, if, you know, for better teeth, but people don't realize like it's much more significant than just like, oh, you know, moderation is literally you probably won't have tooth decay or gum disease if you just don't eat refined carbs <laughs> like and that's how significant it is so um there's also evidence that green tea for example has um direct uh antibacterial and anti-inflammatory effects and some people uh believe it can be used as a mouthwash um that can be used even better than leading pharmaceutical grade antibacterial mouthwashes um, and so at the very least, I would say something I've done is instead of drinking black tea or sorry, instead of drinking black coffee, I'll drink tea. And in particular, I try to stick to green tea or yerba mate specifically for that. And also because I like the buzz better from green tea. Um, unless I'm eating, I'm drinking super high quality black tea or black coffee, but whatever. Um, and another thing is there's a whole lot of people talking about their experiences switching to ketogenic diets and um, carnivore diets. And I'm, I'm talking hundreds of people that, I, that I've seen 
say that, you know, in, in Facebook groups, I've seen videos of people saying this in interviews, um, and of course, Reddit posts, which are more anonymous, but Facebook groups, you can see that these are like real people, you know, regular grandmas that, you know, we all have like uncles and stuff like old people who are surprised that, you know, their chronic gum disease completely stopped, like just all the bleeding in their gums. Some people are saying their tooth, were, their teeth are falling out completely stopped when they went on a low carb diet. And, you know, judging from the studies that I mentioned so far, and even Weston Price's work, um, you don't seem to actually have to remove whole healthy, healthy carbohydrates to prevent gum disease or reverse it or whatever. But people who eat low carb diets and keto diets and carnivore diets notice their gums stop bleeding, sensitivity goes away, uh, their dental health gets better on all levels. So. To me, what this says is, it seems like refined carbohydrates are the main cause of uh, dental decay and gum disease. Um, and, you know, there are actually intervention trials showing people who um, eat less refined foods or remove refined foods altogether have a halt. And it is a four week study. Imagine the progress that they might be able to make after, you know, 12 months or four months. And we have a lot of dentists and people saying that gum disease cannot be reversed or you can't heal gum recession. But how many intervention trials do we have showing this? Do we have any? Um, especially using, and how many intervention trials do dentists, are, do, are dentists even aware of uh, that, com that compare nutrition strategies to see um, their effects on dental health? Most, most dentists don't care about nutrition, or, or they might, but they don't acknowledge a significant impact on uh, gum disease or dental disease, or maybe they, they recommend eating less carbs or less sugar might help, but they don't really, like they, what would you say, they underestimate the benefit. So, uh, I think if you're worried about your dental health, or if you care about your dental health, or your health in general. First of all, remove all refined carbs and be strict about that. I don't see any reason why anyone would stay on those other than probable addiction. And you know, I could make a, a whole nother video on why refined carbohydrates are addictive, but there's plenty of videos out there and it's not unreasonable to conclude that. But even more so, if you do have dental disease, it's probably a good idea to Obviously, definitely remove the refined carbs, but also lower your carbohydrate intake in general. Um, I will say that the, um, again, the, the Stone Age diet that I was talking about earlier, Stone Age study, the, they were saying that the participants who, rever who uh, improved their gum disease and their gum health actually were eating a large amount of blueberries and whole grains. I don't eat whole grains at all. Um, but blueberries on occasion. And I think that's interesting considering blueberries are, you know, a source of fructose and other sugar. <laughs> and, you know, it seems like refined sugar and refined carbs have a different effect on the body than something like blueberries. But maybe re reducing carbohydrates even more and having a study where they monitor people who do so for a longer period of time might have more significant benefits. Who knows? So leave your question and comments down below and let me know, have you, uh, is there other information that I might be missing? Um, do you know of any other studies or books that talk about this? And I will talk to you all next time.